Okay, welcome back to Fast Ship Performance then. My name's Tim Davies, and as you can see, I'm not in the attack shack today. I'm currently in the Shadowlands HQ, and in front of me, I've got walls of monitors. I've got a whiteboard up here because I was teaching this morning. I've just finished instructing Australian pilots, and they were very good, actually, although flown mostly upside down. They weren't at all. I'm just joking. Uh, they were doing some quite complicated radar phases. Uh, look, we're going to talk a little bit today about this email that's come out. From 2021, it's a bit of a hit job by Sky News and all the other papers have picked up on it. And I just really want to just talk a little bit about the issues with the Royal Air Force, and it, the problem it has with white men. And we're going to quickly go to the Telegraph page. It's just formatted better than, this, than Sky News. Deborah Haynes, I think, was a journalist that kind of broke this. She's had a bit of a thing against the Chief of Air Staff, Mike Wigston, for probably the last couple of years, to be fair. She's broken a lot of stories. And if you want to have a look down in my videos, you'll see some of those things that I've actually uh, I've done videos on. Here's me, guys. I am an advocate for the uh, best people coming into the military and flying all kinds of airplanes and doing all kinds of jobs. I don't want to see quotas. I don't want to see people saying, I want 40% women or 20% minorities in a, I don't even want to use the word minority, okay? I want to use the word British men and women, all right? Because I'm a realist, okay? I don't want to segregating people. That's why I don't want to use the word BAME. You'll see that word BAME in here many, many times. Black, Asian, minority, ethnic. I don't want to be using that word at all because it's divisive, because it's saying BAME and everyone else, isn't it? BAME and white people. There's nothing more divisive than that. But of course, that is the goal. That is the goal of these people in charge of us is to divide, keep us occupied, keep me making videos like this, by the way. And last month when I made a video like this, I lost 900 subscribers. So this doesn't do my channel any good, but we have to speak out about this, guys. It's so important to make sure we are united under the one flag. And the one flag that we have, of course, is the flag of Great Britain that we are united under. I work out every morning under that flag because it's not my government's flag. Governments are going to be all the same. If we put a Labour government, Liberal, it doesn't matter. They're going to be the same government controlled externally. But the flag is the flag of the people of this great nation. And that's the thing that I work out. And that's the thing I still have hope in. Look, RF told to stop choosing useless white male pilots leak reveals. Yet, yeah, it's not true, actually. And it, as I said, it's been sensationalised. Let's get into it. So the RF instructed staff to stop. They didn't. It wasn't the RAF, it was someone in recruitment, a guy called Squadron Leader Andrew Harwin, I don't know who this dude is, who worked in the Officer and Aircrew Selection Centre up at Cranwell, and they were discussing the boarding process, and of course what's happening is he's been handing all these white men who want to become pilots, and he says, I can't do anything with these people, what am I doing with these? These people don't want to be admins, they don't want to be supply, they don't want to be engineers, they haven't got engineering degrees, they can't be anyway, all they can be is pilots, and I've got no one else to board. So what he said, look, if we don't have enough let's say minorities and females to board, then we need to make the decision to pause the boarding and to seek more of these people. So he's not really saying that the, the pilots here, these are useless white male pilots, not really what he's saying. He's saying they're useless to him. He can't do anything with them. He's got to have other people to put on the board as well. And the reason he's saying this, and this is what's important, is because the chief of air staff, Mike Wigson, has told him, not directly, but it's come through um, Maria Byford, uh, who's head of recruitment and, and everything else. Joe Lincoln, sorry, is also in that whole line there. It's come through all these people to him. And they've said, look, get us some black people and get us some girls. Because Mike Wigson has said, I need 40% of my Royal Air Force to be women and 20% of my Royal Air Force to be ethnic minority by 2030. That's the directive he put out. If you can believe that, that's the actual the directive he put out, okay? And um, I know Mike Wigston well. I flew with him for a couple of years when I was on 12 Squadron. He was a lovely boss, a great guy, a really great guy. I think as Chief of Air Staff, though, he got captured by this government. It's not a government we have right now. No one voted for Rishi. It's this conservative government. It's not a conservative government, guys. It's a liberal government. All right. We're never going to get a conservative government in the UK again, probably ever. We're in liberal world and Labour. Well, this is new Labour, isn't it? What we're in right now is new Labour territory. We all know that. Sorry for the Americans if you're watching. We kind of have like a we have a conservative government, but it's not. It's like a mix of your Democrats and Republican. It's this kind of mashup of it, okay? It's, it's a really horrible thing. And uh, what's happening, of course, as we all know, all over the world, there's an agenda to drive this diversity thing in, to drive this environmental social governance via Larry Fink and BlackRock to make everyone subservient. And that's why uh, Bud Light and the Ford Raptor are being painted in rainbow flags and all this kind of horrible stuff. And the, the whole thing is nauseating. And it's Pride Month for crying out loud. I thought it was Pride Month every month. I hate that bollocks ever. Doesn't matter. All right. Fair enough. If you like that stuff, um, they're not hurting me. I don't really care. But let's keep it away from the kids. So we're saying keep it away from the kids. Right. So basically saying 
I don't need all these useless white, white male pilots. Um, let's try and reduce the boarding and get some minorities and females in there as well, alongside the males, all right? Now, an RF source. This could be anyone. It wasn't me, by the way. But an RF source. I'm not an RF source. I'm out now. I've been out for about five years. Someone told the Telegraph. Someone. This is hearsay, isn't it? Email clearly demonstrates an endemic culture that was created by the senior leadership to chase ridiculous diversity statistics that were patently unachievable. They are unachievable. When I was working in the service and I was teaching people to fly fast jets, as you know, I still do it now, but I'm a sim instructor. Whenever we had a woman come through, one of the things a woman would ask me or another woman on the squadron or something, we had no female instructors at the time, was when do I have children? When do I start a family? And what I would say to that woman is as soon as possible. If you can get your flying training done, that's a bonus. Get to the operational conversion unit. Learn to fly the aircraft. The moment you set on the, up on the squadron, the moment you set foot, have children if you can plan it like that. Have kids then. It's the best time for everyone really to have kids then, especially if your flying training has taken seven years for crying out loud. That's where the crimes are being committed, seven years worth of flying training. So obviously now we're outsourcing that flying training to Italy, aren't we? Because we can't, we're outsourcing our flying training to Italy and we're telling the Ukrainians they can come and fly in the UK. It is mental. How on earth can you even justify that? And that is the problem is we do not have straight talking bosses within either our government or our military. Now, the issue being, of course, when a woman has kids, she doesn't always come back. And that's the issue. Uh, women tend to be more involved in the early childcare. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. There will always be some feminists on here that will disagree with that, of course. But the men tend not to have that involvement with the young child. They tend to come back into the aeroplane. So we tend to get men coming back to work and they stay a very long time. And women come back maybe for a year or so and maybe not always in a flying role. Because why do you want to put your post-pregnancy body in a fast jet and throw it around the skies? It's a little bit dangerous. You've got a kid at home. You're now paying for childcare, expensive in the UK childcare. So we tend to lose women when they qualify, when they, sorry, wrong, when they're flying jets and they have children. So if you're going to put 40% of women into the military across all roles, the, un the thing that's not spoken about is you need a bigger military. That's all we're saying. You can do it. You can have 40% of your military as women. You can. But you need a bigger military, probably one and a half times the size, to backfill for when those women aren't there. Because you just do. And the other thing about this, by the way, and there was a woman when I used to work with, a lovely woman actually, but she went on, on maternity leave and she had, I think it was six months off and then some time afterwards when she had the child and she came back and the person that she'd been working with, the man that she'd been working alongside in her career the whole way up, he'd been promoted and she stagnated in role. And she said, well, this is unfair. I had a kid and everything. And the man was, the man was obviously doing well. He's going and it kind of is unfair, but she couldn't be reported on because she wasn't there. Physically, she wasn't there to be reported on. Does that make sense? This man was there at work, being reported on, being reported on. You need three reports anyway. Then he gets picked up and he's, this woman wasn't there. She was having a children. Now that conversation needs to happen outside of the service, not in the service. It needs to happen outside. Provision for women when they have children. All I'm saying is when you start stacking 40% of your military with women, you do have problems and you're not thinking about it. And the chief wasn't thinking about it here. Now, 20% minorities in a country with 13.8. How do you do that, by the way? How are you ever going to get minorities into the service? The way you do it is you tell people that we are the best military in the world. Look at us. Look at our standards. Our standards are really high. And then you attract people into that military who also have or want to have the same standards as you have. My standards got questioned by an idiot on Twitter. That idiot was called Greg Bagwell. He was an ex-air marshal. I quite like the guy, actually, but he is a bit kind of air marshal. Fair enough. Happy with that. He quotes me because he thinks for some reason that's going to give his tweet some value. And he's actually screenshotted my tweet. He doesn't have to. He could tweet, He could actually just tweet my original quote. I'm not, I'm not even going to delete anything because I'm a man of standards, right? I'm a man of principle. I'm a man of integrity. I'm not going to delay, delay, I'm not going to delete anything. I'm just literally going to leave it there and I'm going to apologize if it's wrong. This isn't wrong. My standards were not maintained. When I was in the Royal Air Force, I was OC standards, off, officer commanding all standards and flying training on the largest squadron in the Royal Air Force. And I did that best part of a decade guys my standards are not being maintained by the royal air force now i'm out fine happy i'm all i'm saying is that's the case all right that's the case he wants to quote that for some reason and i just said look i'm literally the standards officer great like that was my job that was to uphold those standards anyway he's a bit weird let's leave it shall we lord dannett then was asked by sky news well what would you do if it happened in the army let's play this shall we roll vt do you think it might have happened in the army under your watch Difficult to say. Um, I certainly, from my point of view, there was never any direction given that we should do this or should do that to override the natural recruitment processes. Um, one's always a little bit wary about saying this couldn't have happened on my, on my watch because, frankly, with an army of 102,000 people getting on, people getting on with their tasks, 
um, I can't know what every. Right. So what he said there was never a direction given. And what he meant was no one ever told us from outside the army to change the way we recruited. And that's obviously what's happened with the Royal Air Force. It's happened with all three services, of course, because we know it's come from the government. So here's the thing. When we're critical, guys, when we're critical of the chief of air staff, Mike Wigston, when we start criticizing this man here, where is he? Where is Mike? Mike? Mike's not here, is he? When we start criticising Mike Wigston, when we start doing that, I want you to think about the fact that he was just a pawn in this otherwise government agenda to force environmental, social and governance onto us. And the social part of that ESG is the diversity, equity and inclusion rubbish that's come over from North America or from mainstream Europe, wherever it might be. He's a pawn to push this. And that's what Danet was saying. The ch former chief of the army was saying, well, we were never directed during my time to change the way we recruited. They are being directed now by the government, by the cabinet office, through the Ministry of Defence to do this. And Ben Wallace knew it. And that's the problem when Tobias Elwood drags these guys in front of the Defence Select Committee and says this to them. The elephant in the room, the elephant in the room is we all know that it's the government directing it. You cannot not do it. And that is the problem. Mike couldn't not do what he was doing. Now, you could. You could say, look, I'm a man. I've got red blood. I'm British. I'm not listening to bollocks. I'm going to stop doing this. And I will resign in protest. Mike's not that man. Fair enough. He's just not that man. Now, there's, there are men. It's just Mike's not the man. Right. There's another thing going on here. What also happened, I, I've heard this before as well, was that minority ethnics and, and women were recruited into Holton, which is where the airmen train. They hadn't passed the fitness test because they couldn't pass the fitness test. So they said they could take the test on the first day, giving them longer to train. They were offered employment and a place on the course prior to undertaking a pass or fail fitness test. Men, white men, had to pass that fitness test first. This is, gets a little bit worse than this. Now, minority ethnic and female candidates, they'd obviously get in first and they clock up more service time and seniority to the white male recruits. And this is why I believe that 31 men were given a £5,000 handout down here. It talks about that a little bit. Now, I know a load of guys from Air Squadrons, we'll stop this now, um, who were also leapfrogged. And actually, the people that told me that the white men had been leapfrogged were minority ethnics and women and said, look, I applied after this, this dude, this white dude, and I got my OAFC um, selection interviews prior to they, you know, like I got them within three months and these white men, they took a year, year and a half. Some of them aged out. Let me see if I can get you a tweet here. So, so Greg, under that email I showed you, that thing I showed you where he's trying to quote me, it doesn't matter. Greg's, Greg's, Greg's fine. He's, he's, he's got his agendas. I don't mind about it. I think he's all right, dude. Don't worry. A lot of people don't, but I'm different. Sally here, who's a lovely person, um, she said that her, uh, I think it was, let's not say who he was, but it was a relative, applied to the Royal Air Force. And this, and I did, a, I did some work with this young man here. And I said, look, maybe look at the Navy. The Navy aren't so wrapped up in this. And I joined the Navy because I'm from Portsmouth. My father was a Royal Marine. I joined the Navy back in 98. And I spent five years in the Navy before having the transfer, having the transfer to the Air Force. And the Air Force, I'm grateful they did. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against that. But I uh, went to fly Tornado GL4 under Mike Wigson, in fact. Look at this guy. Look at what he's got here. He had nothing from the Royal Air Force. He's got AAB. He was a Royal Air Force Air Cadet Warrant Officer. He was a Gold DV. You know how hard it is to get Gold DV? And he, by the way, get Gold DV. That does you look. Look, he had a place at Britannia Royal Naval College. That's where they trained the Navy. Um, he passed for Wizzo, passed for all these things. And in February 21, he's already been accepted to the Navy. The RAF finally got back to him. At this point, he had an RAF, uh, Royal Naval Service number already. I love Sally. She's brilliant. So the May 20 on course started. He'd literally been invited to OSC after 14 months of hearing nothing from the Royal Air Force and being fobbed off every time. He withdrew the RF selection and now he's an air, uh, air traffic control officer. So I wrote, this is what happens to a professional fighting force and you mess around with identity politics and quotas. The RF had a huge loss here. If the selection board didn't have any ethnic minorities and women, they were cancelling the whole board, which meant that the white males who were in the system were going for the Air Force, were held up effectively because you're pausing them. That meant they never started on time. The seniority was affected. They weren't going to get in the rank. You can age out of ranks as well, guys. Starting flying training later, being older as well. I mean, the whole thing is appalling. And what really upsets me is to finish with this. There's no lessons learned here at all. So what, at the bottom here, I remember... Maria Byford, who was head of recruitment, said something similar. You know, we're not going to shy away from our diversity goals. The RF says here as well, the Royal Air Force will not shy away from the challenges we face. Building a service that attracts and recruits talents from every part of the UK workforce. That's important to do. I fully understand that. We will continue to do everything we can to increase our recruiting intake 
from underrepresented groups within provisions of the law. The truth is, they were outside the law. And there was a report that was supposed to come out being led by the army. And this was started back, I think, in August last year. And it still hasn't come out now. They're obviously waiting for Mike Wigson to leave. I'll do another video on it when it comes out. But we know they were using positive discrimination as opposed to positive action. They thought it was positive action, but it wasn't. I've talked about that before, guys. There's videos down below. This is pretty poor. Even if you're in the Air Force, your promotions will be hampered because of your skin colour. Even if you're in the Air Force, and I'm not joking, all right, your, your promotions are going to be hampered because of the sex you are. Now, I've seen data, and I'm going to leave this here, on awards. So we're talking MBEs, OBEs, that say that um, it goes up like this at the end here. That says that uh, minorities and, and women are, are overrepresented in the award structure from about 2016 than, than white men are. It's pretty appalling, guys, but I don't want us to get divided over it because that's exactly what they want. It's probably not the best video in the world, let's just say, but hopefully it's brought to your attention some of the things that are happening. I'm just going to throw it out there and just see what response you get. Hit the comments, guys. All right, really appreciate it. I'll probably lose some more subscribers now, so don't don't unsubscribe. If you haven't subscribed, don't just don't bother subscribing, and I'm sure everyone's happy. I really appreciate it. Tim Davis, Fast Performance. <laughs>